back live at the county fairgrounds where the Greek Orthodox Easter picnic is going full blast around us. I met my first Byzantine scholar just moments ago, and you're about to meet him now. His name is Frank Desby, Byzantine scholar at uh, USC. Nice right. to have you here, Frank. Thank you. Nice to be here. Uh, there, I would imagine uh, I'm not alone in having met my first Byzantine scholar recently. What, what are we talking about when we're talking about that, that period in terms of the era and what it means? We're talking about the uh, Eastern Roman Empire, actually. It was called the Byzantine Empire because Constantine the Great had taken over the Roman Empire and looked for a new capital, and he found one in the city of Byzantium, and he rebuilt it and called it the city of Constantine, Constantinople. And now, you've been it. over there a few times. I've been over there several times, yes. Most recently when? Uh, 1974. And there's a, there's an area we're going to talk about particularly here today because it's it's interesting and, and a little mysterious because it's not accessible to a lot of people. I'm talking about M Mount Athos. Tell us what that is. Mount Athos is one of three peninsulas that uh, juts into the Aegean Sea in northern part of Greece, just uh, uh, east and uh, south of Macedonia. And the easternmost peninsula gets the name of Athos because of the mountain that's at the end of the peninsula was named after an ancient god who had hurled had hurled uh, a stone at one of the uh, the god of the sea Poseidon and it became on Athos and that's the one we see now through the trees there I had photographed that on one of my missions there to uh, do research in Byzantine music now what what will, will what will one find in Mount Athos, on Mount Athos. On Mount Athos, you'll find one of many, many monasteries devoted entirely to the uh, uh, to prayer and uh, this kind of a uh, monastic life. And this uh, is one of them here. This is one of them there. This is the monastery of Vatopedi, one of the oldest, actually founded uh, uh, originally around the fourth century. And uh, this, you see there, one of the main churches and some of the buildings that house the monks. Not very many monks live there. Uh, live there now, but they have the largest library, one of the largest libraries of the entire community. Now, women, I understand, are not allowed up there at all. Is that on, in Mount Athos at all? That's true. The women are not allowed on Mount Athos. Uh, it's devoted entirely to the veneration of one woman, and that is the Virgin Mary. And uh, the rest of the community is all men. Is that apt to change? Because uh, women's roles in various churches are changing throughout the world. Is, do, you, do you anticipate that changing? I don't kind? anticipate that, at least in the next couple of centuries. Uh, one thing about the uh, uh, Orthodox uh, religion is that it has been very successful in averting certain types of change, and this is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, now, you stayed at, uh, at least, you stayed at several of the monasteries, I believe. That's but true. We have a shot of, of you at one of them. Which, which is uh, that? This is, that the, is the monastery of Iviro, and again, one of the old monasteries. Again, they have a very fine library, and uh, this is the room I stayed in while I was a guest there. Uh, they were expecting me. I had written ahead, told them that I was coming there to do research, and so they put me up in this room with, uh, there are actually four beds in that room. It's very cleanly kept, as you can see, and it's a very, uh, uh, very uh, uh, fine monastery. It's situated near the sea, and so therefore has a spectacular view. Tell us a little about the lives of the monks who live there. Uh, what goes on, with the, what they do during a day, their diet, that kind of it's thing? It's very sedentary, their life. It's devoted mostly to prayer. They feel the world being in the condition that it's in, someone must take charge and pray for the rest of the world in the hope that all their efforts will help solve the problems of the world. This is it. Uh, they uh, rise very early in the morning and they go immediately to a chapel where there are prayer services. After that, they have certain duties. Some of them make artifacts, some of them write music, some of them paint, and uh, the others do certain kind of agricultural things. And uh, the middle of the day uh, is spent uh, in some contemplation and uh, then they take a siesta, all of them. And after that, there is a, a Vesper service and supper. And that's about it. The Vesper service must coincide with sunset. First time I knew that siesta was a Greek term. First time I ever learned. See what you learn talking to a Byzantine scholar. Uh, the I have heard, is it true that, that their diet causes them some health problems? Uh, their diet is, uh, is very concise. Uh, they don't uh, have much in the way of uh, meat, for instance. They'll live mostly on vegetables, and uh, some fish, and they allow themselves the luxury of meat only at certain festivals, like Christmas, Easter, and so on. And uh, this can uh, tend to alter their blood chemistry to some extent. 
Let's talk a little bit about Byzantine art. And we have an example, I believe, uh, our, our last slide here. What are we looking at here? Uh, you're looking here at a slide from uh, the monastery of Stavrunikitas. Uh, this was painted actually by a father and son team, uh, a painter by the name of Strelitsas and his son Simeon. And uh, this is their uh, depiction of the Last Supper. This is very old. Typical of the art of that period. Typical of the art of the period. It looks very stark and at the same time very colorful. The, the colors are, are very sharp. You notice there isn't so much in the way of shading or shadows. One other uh, aspect of uh, Byzantine culture I'd like to talk about is, is music. Uh, the music. Uh, the music, of course, is a, a special feature of theirs. And this is one of the books okay, uh, that my... has come from one of the monasteries. This book was written in the early uh, 13th century. And it uh, shows you the uh, text and music. Now these symbols, uh, the first line, that's the, the music? The first line, the, the music is on top, yes. Those are the notes. And, and underneath the text, and that's written in the style of the period. And this is a, is a reproduction? This is a reproduction of an actual manuscript, yes. Uh, 13th century. 13th century. Well, I. Uh, when are you going back to Greece? I guess that's we. As soon as possible. <laughs> any, giving any thought to going there permanently? Uh, no, uh, I like it here better. <laughs> okay, Frank, thank you for coming and sharing some of the the wealth of information about that time and that period with us. We appreciate well, thank it. Thank you. It's uh, been a pleasure. And in a moment, we're going to come back with more of the Sunday Show from uh, the County Fairgrounds. Actor Ralph Wade will be joining Kelly uh, after this.